Hello everybody and welcome to your trigonometry review. Now we're going to cover all of the trigonometry that you guys go through in pre-calculus 11 and pre-calculus 12. So just a few, there's going to be a bit of vocabulary in this one so I will make sure I write down any important words. Okay, so we're going to start by looking at angles in standard position. So an angle in standard position sits in the coordinate plane. And so one of the arms of the angle is the positive x-axis here. Um, and the other arm of the angle, so I'm going to actually draw that in a different color. So that is one arm of your angle. And the other arm of the angle will be somewhere along the coordinate plane. So that we will call theta, okay? So theta is an angle in standard position, okay? And that's what we call standard position, means it's sitting in the coordinate plane with one of its arms. So we call this an arm of an angle or a side in the on the positive x-axis. So we now have another angle that we will that we are often going to be using and that is this angle right here which we call theta ref. So this is theta ref is a is the reference angle for angle, sorry, theta ref is the reference angle for angle theta, okay? So the reference angle is measured between, let's go back to my original purple, so reference angles are measured from the terminal arm. So the terminal arm of your angle is the arm that is not the x-axis. We call that arm the initial arm. So reference angles are measured from the terminal arm to the closest x-axis. Um, and a reference angle will always be between zero degrees and 90 degrees, okay? And so generally, we, we started our trigonometry by looking at only right angle triangles. And then we extended it to angles that were bigger than 90 degrees in the coordinate plane. So most angles have the same absolute value as all angles have the same absolute value of our basic trigonometric functions as their reference angles do. The thing that changes in the coordinate plane is whether they are positive or negative. So let's look at our trig ratios, okay? So let's see, in a triangle, okay? So this is back, this actually is not even pre-calc 11, this is all the way back to math 10. So we have our angle, let's call it phi just for fun, something a bit different, okay? And if we have our angle phi, this is the opposite side adjacent and the hypotenuse. And so we had our basic trigonometric ratio, so sine phi is the opposite over the hypotenuse cosine phi is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan phi is opposite over adjacent. As we got into pre-cal 11, we started looking in the coordinate plane. So when we are in the coordinate plane, instead of thinking of opposite adjacent and hypotenuse, we started to think of 
Let's do one over here. We'll call this theta. We started to think of a point on the terminal arm. So we could take a coordinate point and that point would have coordinates x comma y and the length of the terminal arm up to that point we would call r because why we call the reason we call it r is that if we take our terminal arm and we kind of let it rotate around the circle that point would actually trace a circle around so that's why we call it r because it's like the radius of a circle so the distance to our xy point so in the coordinate plane we had sine theta equals x, sorry, not x, good start, Miss Eaton. Sine theta equals y over r, cosine theta equals x over r, and tan theta equals y over x. And then in pre-calc 12, we added a whole bunch, we added a few other ones, which were our um, reciprocal trigonometric functions. So we had cosecant of theta, is r over y secant theta is r over x and cotan theta equals x over y and the thing about our coordinate plane thing is that r is greater than zero but x and y can be any real number, so they can be negative. So that means we now have sometimes sine, cosine, tangent, secant, cosecant, and cotangent that can be positive or negative. And so we had a rule that helped us to remember where these things were positive and negative. Now, personally, I my little shortcut to this, rather than trying to think of a particular rule for each quadrant, I just think, okay, so sine and cosecant go with y. So wherever y is positive, sine and cosecant are gonna be positive. Cosine and secant go with x. So wherever x is positive, cosine and secant are gonna be positive. So sine is positive in the top half of our coordinate plane, and cosine is positive on the right half of our coordinate plane. Um, so wherever the x values are positive, cosine and secant are positive. Wherever they're negative, cosine and secant are negative. And tan and cotan go with the product of x, and x times y. So that means that wherever x and y are the same, they're positive, and wherever x and y are different, they're negative. The tan and cotan will be negative wherever x and y are different. Okay, um, so that is a quick summary of everything we've done so far. Now, generally, if we have an angle theta and we have two angles that have the same reference angles, all of their trig, the absolute values of all of their trigonometric ratios will be the same. So let's actually write that down. So the absolute value of trig functions for angles with the same reference angles are the same. And the biggest place where this is going to make a difference is when you're trying to find an angle if you know the sine, cosine, or tangent. You need to think about, you can find the reference angle relatively easily, but then you need to think about whether it's going to be positive or negative. And in, in that case, that will pl help you place. So for example, if you have cosine equals negative half, that means that you are looking for angles that are in quadrant two or in quadrant three. Okay. So, let's do a little, a quick problem, just to remember, okay? The point negative two comma negative six lies on the terminal arm of an angle theta. 
determine all six trig ratios and calculate the value of, sorry, let's not call it value, let's call it measure, because it's an angle, measure of theta. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do with this kind of problem is generally sketch a picture in the coordinate plane. We have negative 2 comma negative 6. We have negative 2, negative 6. That's our point. Um, and so we're going to think about having a triangle. This is the terminal arm of our angle. We're placing it against the positive x-axis. This is our full angle theta. Okay, So we have negative 2, negative 6. So we have to calculate the value of r. We don't know it. But we do know that the length of this is 6 and the length of this is 2. I'm writing them as positive because we know what the length is. Um, length is always positive. So r is equal to the square root of 2 squared plus 6 squared, which is the square root of 40, which is 2 radical 10. So now we are going to rewrite all of our trig ratios. So sine theta is equal to y over r, which is equal to 6 over 2 root negative 6 over 2 root 10, which is negative 3 root 10 over 10. And secant, uh, cosecant theta is root 10, negative root 10 over 3, the reciprocal of that. We don't really want to have a 10. Just remember, when you're taking a reciprocal and you have a radical in the numerator, 10 divided by radical 10 is radical 10, because radical 10 times radical 10 equals 10. So that's a nice little shortcut for you. And those are both negative. And we can tell that those will be negative because y is negative. We're in quadrant 3. Similarly, we know cosine is going to be negative because we're in quadrant 3. So cosine theta is x over r, which is 2 over 2 root 10, which is either 1 over root 10 or root 10 over 10, which is going to be negative. And then secant theta is going to be negative 10 divided by root 10, which is just negative root 10. And then tan theta, we are in quadrant 3, so tan theta, because both coordinates are negative, the product of them is positive. So tan theta is actually going to be positive. Tan theta is y over x, which is negative 6 over negative 2, which is positive 3. And cotangent theta is x over y, which is negative 2 over negative 6, which is 1 third. Okay, and those are our trig ratios. So now, in order to solve for what theta is, we can take sine inverse of what the sine is, cos inverse of what the cos is, or tan inverse of what the tan is. And those are all things that you can do on a scientific calculator. Now, the only thing to be careful about is I would always take the inverse of the positive because what you want is you're going to get, when you, when you take the tan, sine, cosine, and tan inverse, you're going to get returned an angle that will be, you're only going to get returned one angle and it's going to be between either negative 90 and 90 or between 0 and 180 depending on which trig ratio. That's how your calculator works. So what we're going to need to do is we are going to need to take the in take sine inverse let's let's do it with sine we're going to take sine inverse sine inverse of negative 3 over root 10 so we're going to do right here so sine inverse of of we're going to take of positive 3 root 10 over 10 okay of so sine inverse of 3 times root 10 over 10, 10 divided by 10 equals, so we get 71.565 degrees. Now this is not actually our value of theta. 
this is the value of theta ref. This is our reference angle. And I always do the po take the sine inverse, cosine inverse, and tan inverse of the positive because that will always give you the reference angle instead of like an obtuse angle when you're trying to find an angle in quadrant four. So if you find the reference angle, we can see our angle is in quadrant three. So our theta is going to be 180 degrees. We're further along, we're moving counterclockwise. So it's gonna be 180 degrees plus 71.565 degrees, which gives us 251.565 degrees, which makes sense, okay? Um, so that is one problem that you might be looking at in say a pre-calc 11 course, potentially pre-calc 12 as well. So that's lovely. So. In pre-cal 12, we introduce radian measure for angles. So one radian, if we have an angle and we have, if we think about the angle being on a circle, okay? One radian is the angle that cuts off an arc length. So this distance here where we have R, and then this arc length, if you take a piece of string and measure around, is also R. This angle is one radian. So you've gone one radius of the way around the circle. The angle you've cut off in the middle is a radian. And that's actually consistent because as the circle grows, the radius you have to go further along, you actually cut off the same angle no matter how long the radius is, which is why we can use radian measure. And we use mostly radian measure actually almost entirely radian measure in calculus, because the nice thing about radians is they're numbers, they're not degrees. Degrees are a measure that is kind of a three-dimensional measurement. You are taking, you are not measuring in a flat way, whereas radians are actually a number. And so we can use it like a number and return things like a number. So that is really helpful when we're dealing with functions. So Radian measure, we know that because we go all the way around. So our important points, this is zero degrees and zero radians. This is pi over two radians. 90 degrees is pi over two radians. Pi radians, three pi over two radians, and zero. So we use special triangles, some special triangles for other angles that are important to know. So we have two special triangles. One of them is half a square. So we have pi over four, pi over four. It's called an isosceles right triangle. So this is our 45, 45, 90 degree right triangle as you learned in pre-calc 11 or your pi over four, pi over four, pi over two triangle. So these ones have side lengths with the ratio of one, one, root two. We also have our 30, 60, 90 right triangle. So 30, 60, 90 in radians is pi over six, pi over three, and pi over two. So this triangle has sides, the short side is one, the longer side is root three, and the hypotenuse is two. And we have our shorter our smaller angle is opposite the shorter side, so you have pi over six and pi over three. And the really cool thing about these special angles is that any angle with the same denominator has a reference angle of one of these special angles. So like seven, well, when it's reduced. So like seven pi over six has a reference angle of pi over six. Four pi over three has a reference angle of pi over three. 5 pi over 4 has a reference angle of pi over 4. So it can be a really convenient, I actually find radians a little easier when working with these special triangles. Okay, so we also have a few other special angles that we want to remember. So we can always work out our sine cosine tangent of these triangles because we know the lengths. So if we know the angles, we would know the lengths. So we also want to know what are sine, cosine, and tangent are. And, okay, for zero, pi over two, pi, and three pi over two. Okay, so these are good ones to know and generally you wanna think about, so sine is y over r, at zero there's no y. 
at cosine, everything is x. So x is the same as r. So cosine is 1 and tan is 0 because that's y over x or sine over cosine. And I leave the rest of this for you to fill in using your book or any other reference sheet or just remembering and trying to figure it out, which is, of course, my favorite way. Okay, so going back to pre-calc 12. We sometimes want to be able to solve equations for values of theta. So we might have an equation like this where we have cosine theta equals negative root 3 over 2. Okay. So what do we know about, we want to find, and when we have a question, we want to find theta. And generally we want to, there are two ways we can find it. We can find a specific solution. So we can find between 0 and 2 pi, or we can find a general solution. So we're going to do both here. Okay. So here we know that cosine of theta is negative root 3 over 2. So I know that cosine, because we're looking at x values that are negative, we're, gonna, we're looking either in quadrant 2 or in quadrant 3. And we know that we have a special triangle that is, we see a root 3, so it's going to be, we know that r is 2, so this is our r, and this can be our x. Okay, so we have a, an r of 2, and the x-coordinate is root 3. So that is my special triangle that has an opposite side of 1. So we can see here that my reference angle is going to be, because we have 1, 2, root 3, my reference angle is going to be pi over 6. Okay, is theta ref. So now I have to find the angles that have a reference angle of pi over 6 in um, quadrant 2 and in quadrant 3. So we are looking at pi minus pi over 6 and pi plus pi over 6. So those two angles in quadrant 2, quadrant 3 are 5 pi over 6 and 7 pi over 6. And those are my two thetas, my two possibilities for theta in 0 to 2 pi. Now, we may remember that we actually can have angles that are bigger than 2 pi or bigger than 360 degrees. And the way we do that is rather than going just once around a circle, we may have to go multiple times around the circle and end in the same place. We call these coterminal angles, which means they are the same end point, same terminal arm. different number of rotations. So you've rotated one or more way. You're still rotating in the same directions. Rotations. Okay. So what we can do is that we know every two pi, we're going to hit an angle that has the same sine, cosine, tan. It's essentially the same angle except for the number of rotations. So if we want to give a full solution of all possible thetas, it's any theta that has a terminal arm at 5 pi over 6 or at 7 pi over 6. So any angle with a terminal arm in quadrant 2 or 3 with a reference angle of pi over 6. So the way that we would write this is we would write 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi k. So every 2 pi, we hit another one, um, where k is an integer. And we can go negative because we can have a negative angles. We just know that we're adding or subtracting 2 pi and we'll end up at the same terminal arm. Same with 7 pi over 6 plus 2 pi k, where k is an integer. Okay, last one, and then we'll review just a couple of trig identities, and I'll let you guys play around with those. That's a, a good bit of review as well. So if we have, say, sine squared 
theta equals one fourth. We know that sine theta can equal plus or minus the square root of one fourth. So sine theta equals plus or minus one half. And I know that plus or minus one half gives me a reference angle of pi over six. But it's gonna be in any of the four quadrants because it can be either positive or negative. How do I know that sine theta gives me pi over six? Well, if I'm looking at my 30, 60, 90 right triangle, one half is the short one, root three over two is the long one. So if I know my y, my sine theta is the short one, then I know that the shorter side is opposite my angle, so it's the smaller of the two angles. So we have pi over six is our reference angle. So we have for our specific solution from zero to two pi, we have pi over six, five pi over six, seven pi over six, and 11 pi over six. And for our general solution, we have pi over six plus pi k and five pi over six plus pi k because I notice that pi plus five pi gives me 11 and pi plus pi, 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 plus pi over six will give me seven pi over six. So those are halfway around the circle from each other. So those are all the possible solutions to that one. You have to be a bit careful here. Okay, next one. Okay, a couple of trig identities, a couple of important identities. These are the ones that I find the most important. Um, okay, that we might, that we are the most likely to use. So we have number one sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals one. That's called the Pythagorean identity. Number two, tan theta equals sine theta over cos theta. Number three, sine, our double angle formula is sine two theta equals two sine theta cos theta. Number four, cos two theta equals cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. Okay, or a couple other ways of writing this one is two cos squared theta minus one or one minus two sine squared theta. Okay, so hopefully that was a lot of fun and um, Enjoy your long weekend, and I hope that the trig brings you joy. Have fun.